So, once upon a time, there was a product called Red Hat Linux. And Red Hat Linux came out every six months, and we sold it in boxes at Fry's or Best Buy or wherever. And we weren't really sure what the support cycle should be, because sometimes we'd support it for maybe 18 months, or sometimes we'd support it for three years, or maybe five years. And as it turns out, we were making most of our money from enterprise customers, like big customers. Uh, and they didn't really go for that model very well. And one of the things we figured out was that we were trying to do uh, two fundamentally opposed things with a single product. We were trying to innovate, and we were trying to stabilize both at the same time in one product. And it didn't work very well. It didn't work for us. Uh, it didn't work for our customers. It definitely didn't work for our partners because they didn't know what to stabilize uh, their products against, so it was difficult to grow an ecosystem that way. So we had this great idea to break it into two fundamentally separate entities, each of which uh, approached their own problems in a best-of-breed way. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, whose job is to be the rock-solid, stable platform that customers and partners can count on to be the best of uh, that release of Linux for five, seven years. Uh, and then over here, the rapidly moving uh, platform for future development uh, that we could basically share as an open R&D lab with the community, and that's Fedora. Because they have different goals, we treat them differently. Red Hat Enterprise Linux is the things we charge customers for because it's the thing that is supportable over a long period of time. Fedora, by its nature, moves very quickly. We try to make sure that we release it every six months, uh, more or less like clockwork. And that's where all the cool new stuff goes. So if you want to see cool new stuff, the future, you look at Fedora. Fedora is basically the future now. And the ability of customers to see that innovation happening means that they can actually shape the technology as it moves forward, right? Because if you're a user of Fedora in your development environment today, it means you know before anyone else what technology is going to be in RHEL tomorrow. And it's Fedora's job to sort of aggregate those changes over a long period of time so that every three or four releases of Fedora, we can snapshot it, stabilize it, and turn it into RHEL. And that's the benefit. Uh, and customers can really participate directly in Fedora. RHEL is already at that sort of stable point, and hopefully we've worked out the big problems to such a degree that there's not, not a lot of room for innovation in that particular code base. But in Fedora, we're moving quickly, we've got new features coming out all the time, and if that feature actually impacts uh, something that you're trying to do in your business, you have the ability to dig in directly. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to wait to see what the developers are going to do. You can take the latest snapshot out of Rawhide and say, this doesn't do what I need it to do, but I, you know, I, I put in this 30-line patch and suddenly it does do what I need it to do. It's a power that some customers understand really well and some customers don't understand so well yet. And uh, you know, I think that part of our job in community land is to make sure that customers feel like they can participate and that it benefits them because they really can change the future uh, if they see fit.